Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. We're back. We're here. It's January 1st, 1850, and I realize we got a couple of problems. Remember when we took these three couple of provinces? That was a big issue because right now it's being sieged down and there's just no way of us beating this eastern fleet because I'm looking at it and they're actually like raider convoys. So like our boys here, these frigates have got no way of attacking them. And then like also like I have no way of getting home. Like there's no way to land on these ports because they're being blockaded. So I'm not sure what we're going to do with these ships at all. We could try building more ships, but for us building ships, we can build man of wars like Napoleonic cannon ships, but they are way, way ahead of us in the Navy. So like no way we're really going to break through there. And with these provinces being conquered, the, the real problem, if we go to politics, if we go to our nation, if we go to our nation, uh, we have 40% war exhaustion. You can see that being blockaded makes it tick up like 0.05% per month, right? Like, oh, okay, it's being blockaded in a couple ways and some home ports are being blockaded. That's kind of crappy. But 1.85 occupied home provinces because these provinces are considered our home provinces. So, like, that's big doo-doo for us, man. Our nation is facing war exhaustion, which is leading to uprising and rebels coming out and stuff like that. And the only way to get access is to do uh, what's called, do we have a thing here for sphere of influence? So right now in our sphere of influence, we're kind of bringing a couple of our neighbors in. But Moldovia is actually in our sphere, which means we could get military access to walk through. Well, we're not going to get that with the Connet here. And they are the ones that control Circassia, which is who we need to get through. Because here, we have a truce till February of 1952. And with this Connet, we have a truce until 1850, mid next year. So we have to wait a year and a half to start justifying a war on this neighbor so that we can kill their frickin' stonkin' uh, junior partner so that we can go and attack these locations and are open ourselves up to more invasions from the Burgundians. Does that mean we should surrender? I'm not sure. I'm going to look up what the penalties of containing Muscovy are. They're pretty harsh. I'm pretty sure it's give up a bunch of your land. So we're willing to fight to win this war. But we might have to invade uh, the equivalent of Belgium to get at the French, basically. So I'll update you on how this progresses. Hello. All right, I looked up I looked up what the problem is with the containment war and my god, it's 5 years of paying 25% of our income to the victor. We have to disband half our army and navy and we're restricted from uh, recruiting troops for that 5 year period. So we're humiliated, disarmed and cut down to size. Uh, it's not as bad as giving up our land that we've taken, though if I look at the war they could add war goals to it. Oh, look, they're annexing Korea and puppeting Aragon. Fun stuff, fun stuff. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to fight this tooth and nail, even if it means invading uh, the Connet here and wiping them out and potentially getting even more infamy. Oh, God, that's kind of a problem, isn't it? Now, can I see this coming down here? Infamy is coming down slowly, but while you're at war, it comes down even slower. Uh... So, oopsies, oopsies, we'll, we'll update you soon. Okay, so it's getting a little bit bad. Because we're at 50% war exhaustion, uh, you can see here that it's, it's a lot of bad modifiers that are happening to us. Uh, but basically, when they ask us for peace, every time we decline, we're going to gain more militancy, so local rebels and more war exhaustion so we're going to decline but they're putting us in a very painful position until we can take stuff back and even then the war exhaustion is going to be pretty heavy so we're kind of we might accelerate our economy even harder by accepting their demands um but i don't want to also we have a fleet of one ship over here we were able to dock in our allies port here we could call them into the war but I'm afraid that with their army where it is, 
they might not defend their port and if they get landed on they would they would siege that out it's not it's not hot so let's let's just keep chilling and seeing what's happening and i'll and i'll bring you up to speed once i mean we've only got into april and we need to get to next august to then take half a year you know what you know what Prohibitive from raising armies and lose 50% of their force for 5 years. Pay 25% of tax income for 5 years. And prestige is reduced by 31. That's half our prestige. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. I hate this. I really don't want it, but we're going to send it anyway. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Unlucky. Unlucky. So that means that half of our army has been disbanded. There was a big army in this province and stuff. What does that do? And we're the eighth great power because we went from eighth best prestige in the world down to 36th. And our military went down. Oh my lordy. We were so proud. But how the great have fallen, and it's saying eight there. We're actually at seven. It's a whole thing. Uh, but you know what? We're gonna work. We're gonna work it out. Um, and what we're gonna do now? I still have priority nearby, right? One sec, neighbors. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna keep expanding. We don't need our full army size to uh, do bad things to our neighbors. So. I'll call you in the next time. For now, we're back at peace, which is a positive. And now our people are going to have access to the world markets again because we're not blockaded. So all of these factories can go to spitting things back out. And hopefully our economy can stop spiraling out of control. See how negative it was before? We still have to give 25% of our tax away. So maybe I can lower taxes and have more wealth stay in our country. But uh, we can talk about that because that's also going to drive us to be super, super poor. Uh, so, yeah, anyways, I'll check in soon. Yeah, so we're out of the war. But remember when I said that war exhaustion was really high? Uh, well, it's coming down now because we're at peace, 1% per month. But a bunch of rebels just joined up and they're going to potentially kill this whole battalion of men. Ugh, or at least half of them. But they did win. And now we're sending in the army to uh, absolutely crush the rebels because we don't care about their feelings. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, we'll make people even more upset and make them work hard for us. Uh, so it looks like we're winning in a couple of ways. Let's add these armies up. One of these armies is looking like it's going to the where the other one is. Oh, but they joined just in time to to retreat send this army in we'll send this army in as well so we have a bunch of cannons and reserve troopers so we're able to really obliterate their center here you can see so very good we lost eight thousand men killed twenty three thousand uh we do need to spread our army out again so you guys go ahead come back to the port you'll probably hit whatever's left of the enemy this army will stay unoccupy this land and go blow up the baddies and just like that, rebels have been negotiated with, uh, and everything has returned to a peaceful place in the world. <laughs> so anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll step in here soon. Scandinavia is really fighting on us on this whole Novgorod thing, but it's fine. We'll keep applying pressure. They have a lot of things that they want to do. Um, sorry, who else do we have? Oh, this Connet. We can increase our opinion there. So right now we have Moldovia in our sphere, but we're really starting to grow. If I look at this here, you can see all these Khanates are coming in. Novgorod and Sadaizi we're fighting over. We can't force these people because we have truces with them, though. It's almost August, so we could declare war and try and get that connection done soon. I was thinking about going to war with Sibir because, again, I really want these provinces that are producing... Uh, a very important resource for us, sulfur. But bringing them into our core 
will also allow us first access to their markets or into our sphere. So that's a, a pretty big bonus for us. Oh, also, um, Kindas became allies with us. So we'll also bring them into our sphere as well. What about Coakland? Do you have any interesting uh, uh, resources here? Just sheep, wheat, wheat. Yeah, see, I don't really care that much. Uh, but definitely here. We have a... Oh, the truce is already over. And we have 18 infamy. So, justify war. Establish protectorate. Ugh. What about release puppet? No, what we'll do is establish protectorate. Oh, what have we made puppet? No, we'll establish protectorate. If we get a bad roll on this, we could be in trouble. Uh, going above 30 again and getting cut down to size again. Uh, but that wouldn't happen to us. We're not that unlucky. So let's I'll check in here in a second once things have progressed. So we just got caught. I accidentally hit the button uh, for 14 infamy. So now we're above 31 again. But that, what, people wouldn't. They won't declare war on me again. They won't cut us down to size again, would they? They wouldn't do that. I don't think they would. No, no, no. So I think I'm going to have to load a save. <laughs> Oopsie. Uh, but basically the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth immediately after stopping that clip, basically. You can see it's only, it's been less than a month, I think, declared war on us. And, uh, well, you know what? Oh, crap. There's an annual autosave, so we could start this war, but look, 30, 23, 23, 24, and not only that, but our allies bailed out. They were like, sorry, bro, sorry, bro, we are not, uh, we are not your allies anymore, oopsie. So, um, and the claim that we just made on this land is now basically null and void because we're going to be busy fighting a war. So now I'm going to load a save. I, I did the thing. We could have rolled anywhere from zero infamy gain to 15, and we rolled a 14, and basically anything above 13 would have put us over the 30, which led us to this. So I, I took a gamble. We got a bad roll. We lost. We're going to have to do a quick save here. And here we are. Rebecca, January 1st, 1951. We could do the same thing, justify war. We're not going to do it. We just accepted an alliance from... Kangshar down here and we're gonna get some influence on them and continue as if nothing happened though just a quick spot check on our factories you can see that we already have this bad boy to level four so it can have 40,000 people and it's at three quarters and all this other stuff so Moscow is whoo it's so thick for factories right now tons of jobs tons of people uh even like level three factories here making some clothes and stuff we could diversify I probably want more steel and, and uh, weapons and stuff. Again, we need sulfur, which is why I talked about conquering more land. But apparently our sulfur is being used. Anyways, it's a, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. But basically, our factories are doing well. We're going to keep expanding uh, in particular. And let's actually, maybe while I have you, um, let's look at our market activity. So you can see we're selling tons of lumber on the world market right now. Uh, it's basically maintained its cost. It started at like 1 up to 1.1 and now at 1.2. Uh, whereas the cost of wood is also going up. So we're making a slight margin when we're cutting it up. So it's not the best product to go for. Uh, whereas clothes, where's the clothes? Clothes have been taking off in value. So let's maybe kickstart a uh, clothing industry for us. And also furniture has been taking off. So we have a lot of lumber and wood. And if it's not valuable on the world market for resell, then we should keep producing it, which is what you can see these factories are being upgraded for. So we have efficiencies on our production. I can click down here. Um, I mean, the, the profitability you can see is like 12, 10%, which is, is pretty nice. But I thought there was a way of seeing, yeah, so we've got throughput tech we've got output tech we've got all these other things uh child labor is legal so plus 10 percent but look at that war exhaustion minus 42 percent so as our war exhaustion comes down our country is going to get much better um and 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 
we get average infrastructure in the state, 16% bonus, and 25% bonus because we have a sawmill, the very bottom item there, 25% because we have a sawmill. If we go to the sawmill, we can see that it's getting a 25% because we're producing wood in the state. So perhaps here where we have a closed factory, right? If we had a textile mill, this would be stronger. So let's go ahead and even though our economy is a little bit crap right now, you can see the big negative, we'll get a textile mill coming in. Uh, and up here we have clo um, maybe more clothing because we know it's becoming more valuable or more textile. Let's check the production. See, this is what we're looking at. Fabric is increasing in value. So let's produce some of that as well. But instead of doing it in our capital province, you can only have eight factories. So I kind of like the idea of holding off. Like this would benefit from a manufacturing. See, I'm just getting all thought up. I'm like manufacturing here. Down where we're building the ammo, we want to build explosives. And then somewhere else where we have lots of uh, people. And then we have lots of people in Tambov. So there's a better workforce that we can move over. We want another textile mill. Textile mill is kind of painful for us because we don't have cotton or dyes. So maybe we'll start with the clothing factory and backfill once we have a chance. But yeah, lots of great productions. Yo, Carson building some fertilizer. Somebody's building us some cement. Lots of good stuff. Though we need more maintenance goods need. We need iron and machine parts. So uh, we need to fix these factories. Anyways, that's enough uh, production and trade discussion. Uh, let's make sure the Commonwealth keeps liking us because right now we have a very negative relationship with them and i think it's because we have cores on their province so they know that we want to invade them to get our land back uh which we will do but we need friends first and we also need to lower our infamy and we need to connect this freaking land man oh baby we need to connect this land all right i'll uh, talk to you soon Okay, so remember how last time we uh, had a rebellion over here? This time, the rebellion uh, kind of sprung up in a different spot. So we got to go uh, bust up some rebels here. And uh, don't worry about it. Actually, let's just do this on high speed. Our armies will march over, make quick work of the enemy. Because this time, they don't have as tall a stack. Just hopefully, they don't uh, also rebel in the previous spot. You can see all these armies here. We're losing like 200 people just because we have such dominant position over them what is this alliance offer but your protect your Ooh. all right scandinavia i'll be friends with you we'll be the friends in the north and we'll increase your relations and Quite frankly, I know that we don't really like the lift, like the Polish, but we'll, we'll make them like us just a little bit more. Uh, we're bringing you into our sphere so you can be happy. And basically now, what I'm hoping for is, even though we're allied with Scandinavia, perhaps, perhaps, we can push the Scandinavians away from Novgorod being in their sphere. And we can force them into our sphere, which will prevent the Scandinavians from feeling so territorial. And then we can declare war. Right? See here, Novgorod is protected by the following nations because they're their sphere leader. So if we can get them out of the sphere, then we can do that. So anyways, the rebellion has been negotiated with. <laughs> um, so we'll see you next time. Okay, just a very quick uh, touch point here. Even though we're hemorrhaging money and have been in the red for super long, we just got the technology uh, breakthrough for precision parts to get machine parts factory. And this will give us the ability to every factory you build requires some level of machine parts. You can see down here, hundreds. Some of the, ba some of the basic ones take like 30 and then some of the bigger ones cost like 100 to 200 and that's what drives the price and we have to wait to import it 
Um, now, if we build it ourselves domestically, then bam, we're just in such a better spot. We do, And that way, when we get sieged down and blockaded from a navy that's stronger than ours, we can start to say, hey, well, let's... Um, we can say, hey, we can build those parts and machines and products domestically so we're not as reliant on the world market. So very important. Saki is still fighting this uh, Georgian rebellion. So we'll see if Georgia gets spit out as a country. But I'm thinking instead of justifying war to conquer a land, we can also justify war to get a region. And that might work well. Or... Like, because when we do this declare war, it takes 15 uh, infamy, which was bad and still is bad if we get a bad roll. Whereas down here on Shaki, if we justified war to get a concession, it's only 7.5. So it's not so bad. And we could get like this Georgia territory. What I'm worried about is that Georgia might split across as a separate country. But maybe that doesn't. You know what? While I have you here, let's justify war, demand. I mean, we could also just force them into our sphere. But let's do a good demand concession. Because we're the good guys. <laughs> okay, here we go. Declaring war for Georgia. Demand concession. We actually got caught right away when we were declaring this one. So we did shoot right back up uh, in terms of uh, Nene's. But that's fine. Let's go ahead. This is mountainous territory. So let's go ahead and split up the army. And uh, can I slow down the game speed, please? And please actually split the army this time. And you can see that they're struggling with rebels very heavily right now. So it should be a pretty easy time for us to just walk in and say, Sorry, your country belongs to us. So... I mean, this might happen fast enough that it doesn't really matter. Oh, we can't unsiege the rebels? Oh, wait, we can. You're just walking through still. So we're going to unsiege the rebels for their the, the country, like for our enemy, so that we can be the ones owning this country. Why aren't you guys sieging, though? It's really slow going because it's mountains. Or it's slow going because you suck. Hmm. Well, whatever. We're going to get through it. Upper house rearranged. Couple other things going on. Uh, anyways, we'll let you know here soon what happens. Also, one, one quick thing. We just did conquer a spot. So now we have access. Uh, but we are in the... Well, we were in the green for a brief moment there. We still have... $300 like a day that we're sending overseas but our reserves have held and we're actually war is good for business apparently and there's organized factories so some good tech what we need is there's a technology in here am I crazy Am I crazy? Research points. Let's up the rate at which we do research. I haven't really worried about that early on because our research has been so slow. You see here that we only have 16% literacy in our country. And that leads to only a couple of points, which is just not that great. We've been trying to fund our education system and administration and stuff. Uh, we could have cut back on the, on the military spending, perhaps. <laughs> and uh yeah so now we should be really in the green yes and we're gonna start getting some technologies that are gonna help us research even faster and once again we're ready for some new laws so passing trade unions is good because it allows uh more social reforms to kind of come through here so lots of interesting anarcho-liberals are what are they saying See social reforms rolled back and will never support further reforms of any kind. Wow. Wow. 
now. Okay, anyways, we'll let you know how the war goes. But so far, so good. We're just conquering land. Though we are at war, I forgot to mention, just because of how it works. Um, this little country here and Iraq were allied to this country. So we are in a little bit of a bigger war, but it's not that big a deal. And just like that, they accepted peace for South Georgia. Though those rebels, pesky rebels, did come back and attack me. I was hoping to leave them alive in the enemy land. And you can see that they're, they're leaving now. So perhaps we are good. Let's disband the people. And spread this army out. We're just going to occupy Georgia in a way that uh, keeps us safe. Oh, also, uh, infrastructure. Oh, I guess there really is only a couple places to build it. Is this our land? It sure is. Railroad for you. This is not our land, but this is our land. And we do have some naval bases. So, perfect, good stuff. Um, we are well infrastructured up. We do want to conquer this spot in between, but let's let our infamy tick down as well as our war exhaustion. We want to maintain our, our position as the eighth great power because the, the benefits of having a sphere of influence, which you can see is starting to build up, uh, is really nice, but ugh, a lot of things are happening. Right now, there's a confederation a uh, war happening between let's see show wars uh, bohemian aggression order of the restoration of order of the north german so all of there's a whole bunch of what is this the league of berlin there's bohemia there's the danubian confederation which is like germany burgundy's involved scandinavia not to mention the port like there's a whole bunch of unification happening and all of these countries are like secondary powers and great powers in their own right so there's a lot of dense power happening here in central europe austria what a freaking nothing nation you probably never heard of them and yeah, so that's good. Meanwhile, we're trying to just maintain a tenuous hold on our great power status. 162 points because we lost 40 points of prestige before. Uh, but otherwise, we're doing all right to maintain. We're, we're, we're definitely, we're eighth by a margin where the next guys are all kind of close. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't want to lose our influence over all these nations which we will if we become a secondary power so let's keep our eyes on that so i decided to lower our tariffs which are really causing us to just barely break even on our money now maybe i'll up the taxes on the poor i'm trying to lower taxes on the poor to give them more social mobility because as they get rich uh they move into the next category and become artisans and and uh oh wait craftsmen so they can promote from farmers to craftsmen and onward so that's really good for us we like that um but another thing i was looking at is we want novgorod in our sphere to get it out of our ally scandinavia sphere and one thing we can do for that is invest in their country so let's make them stronger uh excuse me i can't hit the thing go to diplomacy I'm pretty sure there's a way to invest in their country. And, uh, oh yeah, right in here. So we can build railroads in their country to give a financial incentive for them to like us. And because we plan on conquering it anyway, let's start by doing this and seeing now in here our money that we've invested in there thousands and thousands of dollars right very very good twenty two thousand uh and we'll we'll keep doing it man if we have to i'm also doing it on the land that we have cores on because i'm uh thinking that's the most likely to go to us first whereas this is their industrial heartland we're not gonna we're not gonna help them with that area not just yet at least um oh, is this a little bit all messed up my thing is all funky now Okay, well, at least the, at least it's kind of coming up correctly on, on your screen. So, 
let uh, there's just this random line here at the bottom anyways let's continue good stuff ahead um we are gaining a lot of influence in a lot of countries which we like and uh yeah increasing opinion so our cordial status goes to friendly goes to in sphere so right now we got a lot of people that are getting closer and closer and we have some battleground states around us not to mention we can't be influencing or we are influencing these locations but it's contested because reasons we'll check in soon